up as a kid. You were in Connecticut, right? Weren't you? Yeah. In New Haven area. And tell us a little bit about uh, uh, about your your mother and her her encouragement and the funny way she did it. I, I like hearing you talk about it, though. As a child, uh, you know, we'd go to see these motion pictures and everything else. And I'd come out and play it for two or three days, you know what I mean? Uh, right. Especially westerns, cowboys, and all that. And she'd watch me, you know. And she uh, had been born into the, into the purple. Uh, my mother was a countess. And of course, it frowned very much on anybody of royalty going onto the stage. So she couldn't do what she really wanted to do, and I think she took it out on me. Because <laughs> one day she said, uh, when I came back from World War II, and she had watched me all my life at that time, and she said, I, I didn't want to go to work in a factory, and I said, I, I, I don't, I don't, I think I'll go back into the service. She said, have you ever thought of becoming an actor? says, you always like to make a damn fool of yourself in front of people. Why don't you give it a try? And I looked up and I saw this golden light and I said, Mom, that's what I'm going to be. I had no idea what an actor was, what he did, how he did it and everything else. But I wanted to be an actor. And the rest is history. Well, we're all the better for it. Bless your mother <laughs> for encouraging you. I bless her you. too, believe me. Before, I want to go back to a few SAG-oriented uh, things because you served on the board, and I know you spoke out for SAG. Uh, but I wanted to jump to the, the whole McHale's Navy when it came about because, as you've said, uh, you, by now you're a really established movie star, everybody knows you, but then there's this world of television that goes even further in terms of being known. But just tell me how that happened, because that's great. Ego. <laughs> it all started with ego, believe it or not. Uh, my agent called me and he said, uh, Ernie, we've got a thing here called McHale's Navy. Yeah. He said, I know you love the water and you're, we got a PT boat and everything else, and we go out in the water and everything else. and." We, do this thing, and he explained it all to me, and I said, well, I tell you, it sounds interesting, but uh, I'm a motion picture actor now, you know, and, and I, I can't do it. Oh, oh, well, listen, if you change your mind, let me know, will you? Because we, we're, we'd like to get this thing settled and really get started. I said, yes, sir. Okay. The next morning, as the good Lord would have it, came a knock at the door, some kid selling chocolate bars. And he said to me, uh, after I just said, okay, I'll buy them, I said, mister, he said, you look awfully familiar. What's your name? And I said, my name is James Arness. <laughs> he said, no, he says, he does gun smoke. I said, no, really. I said, my name is really Richard Boone. He said, no, he does have gun, will travel. <laughs> I said, son of a gun, this kid knows them all. I said, well, I'll get him now. And I'd tell him my name. And I know he'll... Ernest Borgnine, zilch, nothing. I looked at him and he said, I know I've seen you somewhere. He said, thanks, son, here's your money. I put down the chocolate bars and called up my agent. I said, that part still open? <laughs> he said, yes. He said, what changed your mind? I said, I'll do it. Said, what changed your mind? He said, none of your damn business. <laughs> People came to me and said, you've won an Academy Award. You're a motion picture actor. What are you doing on television? And I said, well, wait a minute. It's all entertainment, isn't it? Whether you're working on television or whether you're working on, on motion pictures. He said, yeah, but you know, that you're, you're lowering yourself. How can I be lowering myself? And I, suddenly I found out how lower I could get. Everybody in the world knew me. I went to Japan on a honeymoon and Oh, Mikhail, Mikhail, you know, yeah. everybody knew me. And, you know, had I remained on, on, the, on the motion pictures, yes, I would have been fine. But not as many people knew me. How long did Mikhail's Navy go? Because it four seasons. It was four seasons. And it's still running somewhere. It had real impact. And you were great in that. And I thought it was great because it was broadening because you, you could laugh and smile and be charming, not the scary killer, which you, you know, could always Navy, go back to doing. Yeah, the Navy wouldn't have anything to do with this after a while. I, I oh, they said, no, 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 this is, not the, this is not the Navy. No, no. And one day I got a call to go to the Pentagon. So I went to the Pentagon, and I was supposed to have lunch 
with the Secretary of the Navy, no less. And I walk in, and, and beautiful setting, you know, and, and in his private quarters in the Pentagon. Boy, I tell you, these guys know how to live it up. And I sat down, and we were eating, and I said, Sir, why? Why, uh, why is this all this? Why, why? He said, you're the best recruiter we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe That's it? That's great. And I've actually seen officers, officers <coughs> in the Navy, who said, we joined the Navy simply because we wanted to be in Mikhail's Navy. Great. Amazing.